let's bring back our path panel. Matthew Cotinetti, Christina Valentoni, and Vaughn Ververs. Vaughn, Crossroads went up with a giant buy. This is the Carl Rove, Ed Gillespie, Super PAC, because they have more powers than your average PAC, apparently. $20 million ad buy. It's a serious ad buy. It's running across a bunch of states. $20 million in June of 2011. Is this money well spent? Well, I don't. It, any money in politics is probably well spent to some extent, but I think that it may be a little too early for this kind of thing. It's the middle, it's in July, you know, we're just getting into the summer months. Uh, the argument that they're making is one that I think that anybody who has been paying attention to the news has already kind of made and decided for themselves. They're making uh, an economy argument on Obama. So right. It's his economy. Look at his politics. But remember, what th done. this is a group that played a very big role in the midterm elections in, in the House and Senate races, they look to be targeting those kinds of races again. So in that sense, it probably isn't a waste of money. Christina, what surprised me is so far, we not much of a response. One of the super PACs on the Democratic side, majority PAC, which is the Senate one, they went up with a radio spot. That's like bringing a knife to a gunfight. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, it's, it's sort of like the way you watch the DCCC these days. They're doing these targeted releases or like small radio yeah, buys that end up ads. being a few thousand yeah. dollars. But, you know, the interesting thing about Crossroads is that they say they're not going to take any sides in the GOP presidential primary, but there are several people affiliated with Crossroads who are pro Romney or somehow affiliated with Romney, Romney. You know, organizational groups. And this economy argument boosts him. And so could that be more what this is about? You know, you mm. get the spotlight on the economy, perhaps. Romney does better Thank nationally. you. I like the conspiracy Very theories. Speaking. <laughs> I like it, too. I like it. Let's talk a little bit. Speaking of conspiracy theories, this relationship between Boehner and Kanner and the debt talks. You know, on one hand, Kanner, you know, backed out and everybody, you know, McConnell sort of backed him up for doing that in Kyle. But at the same time, Kanner was sending the message to Don Boehner, hey, buddy, I'm not selling a tax increase. You're going to have to do it. <laughs> right. And that's a tough sell in any Republican conference, certainly in this one. And I think there's so much shadow boxing going on right now between the Democrats uh, and the Republicans inside the Republican caucus. There's a lot of shadow boxing. We're not going to know the outlines of a deal, in my, if there is a deal, until 24 hours before August 2nd. All right. Very quickly, shameless plug. You are the most prepared on shameless plug. Fast. A little bit. OK. Top five member versus member. Battle. I love it. Redistricting is so interesting. We're we still going to geek out on redistricting in, soon. In roll call today. You can also find this on online, but uh, this is your handy chart to members that are going to have to face each other. Another, nothing nastier than member versus member primary fights. I love Can't them. Wait. If you don't get enough of Chuck Todd's Barnaby Jones references on the show, check out our net or never any discussion. Who else can make a Barnaby Jones reference? Politics.msnbc.com. And Matthew? I'll promote myself. I'm blogging on the WashingtonPost.com this week, so check it out. Hey, all right. So it's not just Weekly Standard. It's Washington Post. Look at that. Multi-platform. The so-called MSM. Huh? All right. <laughs> Continenti, Valentoni, Ververs, thank you all. That's it for this edition of the Daily Rundown. We'll see you on Hump Day. Coming up.